So, uh, this is the lecture number 32, uh, we will be focusing mostly on uh, centrifugal pumps. So, basics here, uh, centrifugal pumps are been classified, uh, um, not centrifugal in broad classification like it is centrifugal pumps are part of uh, variable displacement pumps. So, the variable displacement pump as I said the Q uh, discharge varies inversely. Okay. So, head if you go uh, in order to get the same discharge, if you are going deeper and deeper right the discharge is going to uh, be less. Okay. So, variable displacement pumps are classified as mixed flow, propeller, centrifugal, jet pump and air lift pump. Uh, so, the centrifugal pumps are most uh, common in uh, uh, pumping water uh, in, in, in case of irrigation you know drinking water. So, that is why we, our focus is more on centrifugal pump. So, the, it could be like volute type pump or diffusion pumps and again volute, term, uh, volute pumps are single acting and uh, or it could be a multi stage pumps or diffuser pumps could be a vertical turbine pump or submersible turbine pumps. So, here um, we will be looking into you know this category like volute and diffuser type. Uh, and then we are going to work on uh, I mean some workout examples in case of centrifugal pumps. So, uh, so next is the centrifugal pump uh, here the hydraulic principle if you see. So, initially what happens the, the uh, basically the centrifugal pump will have two parts. Uh, one is the uh, rotating part it is called impeller the other one is the fixed part or stationary part is the casing. So, the, uh, the impeller uh, once the pump uh, which is the casing which has initially the filled with water this is called priming. So, when it is full completely uh, having water what happens and then you rotate. So, that is uh, really it is going to rotate the water and creates uh, the high velocity at the center and uh, increasing velocity will decrease the uh, pressure at the center and that will uh, create the suction at the center and the suction at the center will pull the water from the suction and then it delivers to the uh, outside through the uh, impeller vanes. Okay. So, those, those are spiral uh, vanes uh, which increases the uh, you know the, the diameter uh, from center to uh, periphery. So, then uh, that is kind of the veins or guides will help in uh, throwing the water cent in centrifugal force and then that water will be collected in the discharge uh, column. So, here you clearly if you see this observe the uh, uh, animation here. So, initially water is going inside then the impeller is working right. So, that is going to throw the water through the, the discharge column. So, uh, basically uh, so this has an impeller this is called an impeller right and then uh, so this is a casing. So, this is the casing. So, these are the, so this is a rotating part this is a rotating part and this is a fixed part. So, then uh, there is a it, when it rotates so the water will be pulled. So, when it rotates what happened so the water will be uh, uh, enters into this uh, center of the thing and then rotates and then finally, the outflow is taking place. So, here the inflow is going in. So, it rotates and then uh, because of this uh, low pressure it goes inside the chamber and then that really pull, uh, throws water uh, radially outwards right through the veins of the impeller and then that water will be collected through the, the chamber. Okay. So, this is the discharge point and this is the suction point. So, this, this is the main principle here is a converting the velocity head into pressure head. Okay. So, here uh, if you see now this is a horizontal uh, uh, I mean impeller horizontal pump case. The similarly, so the centrifugal force causes the water particles to be thrown from the impeller into the casing. Okay, so that we have seen, and the forward uh, flow through the impeller so reduces the pressure at the inlet, allowing more water to be drawn in through the suction pipe 
by atmosphere pressure. Okay, so, the liquid passes into the casing wherein high velocity is reduced to convert into pressure head. So, this we have seen. So, here so when uh, once it rotates the fluid which is inside the chambers it is also going to rotate and uh, the uh, and, uh, and also the center uh, the velocity is uh, going to increase and here the velocity is uh, less velocity here more velocity here. So, less velocity will have more pressure and less pressure. So, that definitely uh, I mean transports water from uh, less pressure to high pressure again. So, that that will help and then the final once the water is inside it is going to throw outside. So, uh, in order to really understand this uh, centrifugal force. So, there is an example suppose if you have a bucket uh, for water which uh, has the bottom closed and uh, and the top is let us say open top is open. So, when you, uh, the, the bucket has water and you have a string here and holding in one hand if you rotate it. So, the water which is present in the bucket would not escape right uh, because there is no outlet here and uh, suppose if you have a hole here we have a hole here and the same setup if you use it what happened the water is going to what is going to escape right what is going to escape uh, because of the centrifugal force centrifugal force. So, suppose if you have the uh, top is closed the top is right uh, closed and having a hole at the bottom right the top is closed and uh, you have uh, I mean bucket has hole in the bottom of course. So, here when you rotate it what happens so, for some time the water is going to escape then after that no water uh, which will come out from the, the hole uh, though there is a water present in the bucket. So, that is because uh, once the water is escaped so that means that much uh, volume is being emptied right. So, because there is no uh, opening here that means, there is no atmospheric pressure which is influencing on the fluid and that creates the vacuum. The vacuum is not going to allow the water to, to escape anymore. So, this similarly in centrifugal force this kind of vacuum definitely influence in taking the fluid uh, from the suction inside. So, then you can get the continuous flow. Suppose the same thing. So, you have you have the continuous like like you have a uh, bottom. So, sorry you have top closed bottom open, but the top is connected to a pipe right there is a continuous supply of water and in that case what happens even if you uh, rotate it. So, water will continuously go in and then you get continuous flow out. So, this kind of principle you can see in centrifugal uh, pump. So, centrifugal pump again uh, individual it is classified as uh, uh, volute type is based on the energy conversion. So, the volute and diffuser type and the number of stages single stage and multi stage. So, stages depends on the number of impellers you are using single stage you have one impeller multi stage you have uh, multiple impellers stacking on the axle. So, then uh, impeller type it could be a open type impeller semi open type and closed and non clogging type uh, impellers. So, based on impeller type also centrifugal pumps are classified and the number uh, type of inlet suction the single suction and double suction. So, single suction uh, you could see the uh, centrifugal pumps and double suction in case of jet pump you have two suctions going in and uh, axis of rotation horizontal and vertical vertical you have seen the horizontal. Uh, uh, I mean the pump axis is horizontal then uh, that is a horizontal pump at the vertical. So, the mostly we will see the vertical case of uh, uh, centrifugal pumps and method of drive uh, the uh, direct connection and uh, with uh, power transmission. So, direct connection we also call mono block. So, mono block pumps or the, the motor and pumps they are inside the pump unit um, whereas, the in case of the with power transmission sometimes you have a belt drive right belt drive is external drive. So, in that case so uh, the centrifugal 
pumps are uh, you know classified in uh, direct connection and uh, with power transmission uh, kind of centrifugal pump. So, uh, the parts here if you see, so the basically two parts the rotating element is impeller and stationary part is casing, then other parts are uh, listed out here. Um, this is uh, uh, I mean delivery point and this is the suction point and this is the rotation and you can see the impeller here. So, this is an impeller and then this is the casing. So, then there are other parts this is called eye of, eye of an impeller which is the center of an impeller, um, then the shaft and other parts are seen here. And then uh, next is uh, the volute type centrifugal pump. So, volute type here uh, this is so if you clearly observe from center to the delivery point. So, the radius is increasing uh, and, and also its radius is increasing from uh, uh, center to the top ok center to top. So, kind of this is a volute kind of thing. So, what so the moment the, uh, the, the fluid which is uh, coming uh, at the extreme point. So, that is called this uh, due to centrifugal force. So, there the pressure is high uh, right the uh, and the velocity this is the low velocity. So, then after that when uh, e, e, when you have the volute type so see and again the velocity will be less uh, further reduced and the pressure is going to increase and there uh, there is a losses like uh, you know the frictional losses and all the turbulent losses will be less when you have the volute uh, type of uh, you know opening sorry. And uh, so, this is predominantly used. So, this kind of pumps are being uh, used predominantly in case of irrigation and uh, domestic purpose and drain is pumping and no diffusion veins, but rather the outer casing is a spiral. This is a spiral kind of thing and, uh, and here if you see the fo uh, form of outer casing reduces the water velocity right by creating an equal flow of water it moves around the spiral ok. So, and the spiral is sometimes called a volute or hence the name of the pump is volute type ok. And then the so next is uh, uh, the diffuser type. So, as you see in volute type, so uh, the this is only used for you know shallow uh, case, but uh, if you want to increase the uh, pressure you should not increase the pressure. So, definitely there is a diffuser in between the uh, impeller and the uh, casing ok. So, this is called if you see here. So, this is called diffuser and this is an impeller eye of an impeller or the shaft this is the shaft and eye of an impeller. So, uh, here in this picture if you see. So, as in case of volute type. So, uh, the fluid really enters through the veins right escapes through the veins and this part is a diffuser. So, uh, here is clearly see the velocity profile. So, initially the velocity is uh, less uh, because the, uh, the, the velocity is in here because it is the throwing here the throwing. So, then uh, uh, sorry. So, here this is the pressure sorry. So, these are the pressures showing. So, the pressure is less and then after that pressure pressure is more 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 and then suddenly it is going to escape through the, the diffusers. So, the diffusers again this is the fixed unit. So, this is the fixed and the casing is fixed and only the, the diffuser uh, sorry the, the impeller is a mo moving part here. So, uh, so, if you see here in the diffuser uh, case. So, the multiple uh, diffusion veins surrounded the uh, rotating impeller. So, here so this is an impeller this is impeller veins right impeller veins and this is the diffuser veins these are the diffusion veins. So, as water is uh, released from the center of the impeller it spins outward as an impeller rotates. So, it, it goes suppose a water uh, sorry the water comes here. So, water initially comes through through this and then it diffuses out right and around the impeller circumference uh, or various diffusion veins the passages that gradually widen the opening into a circular or spiral casing. The main role of diffusion veins is to reduce the velocity of water slowly thus transmitting velocity into a pressure. 
So, that is the main thing. So, here the moment it, it, it comes, so if this suppose this is the uh, uh, impeller and then the diffuser here. So, the diffuser will have the opening right. So, this opening the moment of wa uh, water when enters through this right. So, then definitely the velocity will further reduces and also it acts as a guide right and uh, that will help in uh, increasing the pressure head without uh, losing much uh, pressure energy. Okay. And then the next is uh, the centrifugal pumps. So, single stays and multi stays in case of single stays pumps the total head is delivered by single impeller if you see this. So, this is a single stays pump. So, only one impeller is uh, present here whereas, multi stays pump you have single axis there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 impellers are uh, I mean they are uh, installed. So, here uh, the discharge is same in case of single impeller, but the head will be really increased. So, head is more than let us say H1 and M1, M, H, S, M, uh, Q, S single discharge and multiple uh, discharge. So, Q, S is equal to Q, M and more over the cases the discharge is same, but uh, head is more uh, in case of multiple, um, multiple impellers. So, here type of impellers if you see the open impellers. So, it has uh, the impeller has I right. So, then after that the veins are uh, really open they are open that means, so there is no uh, just like here. So, difference uh, between the closed closed in the sense. So, the both it has a bottom plate and then the top plate right in case of uh, I mean, uh, so, in veins are really free on both sides and the less efficient here because the more uh, I mean more losses will be uh, seen here. Semi open impeller, so one side is closed the other side is open and it is obviously more than um, I mean efficient than the open type. The closed impellers is the both sides like there is a one uh, top one uh, uh, you know um, closer and the bottom also closed. So, this is the uh, uh, closed impeller and there is a non clogging uh, impeller. So, this will be basically used to uh, pump a slurries right or muddy water. So, uh, so that it that is the reason it is called non clogging type. So, then uh, so next is so centrifugal pump the, the frictional head. So, how to estimate frictional head in case of centrifugal pump? So, uh, here uh, we have seen previously there are three formulas we used one is the Darcy Wiesbeck e equation, Heisen Williams and Scobie's equation uh, in the previous lectures. So, here uh, we can use uh, Darcy Wiesbeck equation and that is H f is equal 4 f L V square by 2 Z D. So, this equation will be using in uh, estimating friction head loss in pipes. So, um, here friction head calculation pipe head loss due to energy required to overcome the resistance of pipeline fittings. The friction head exists both suction and discharge of the pump and it varies the rate of flow of uh, pipe size condition of interior and pipe material and pipe size. So, so here if there is a pump you have right. So, if this, if this is the delivery and this is the suction. So, since we are using pipes and bands, so definitely the water now, which is flowing here right so that will have the uh, loss in energy ok. So, that is because of the friction head which is inside the uh, pipeline inside the fittings and valves. So, everything so we need to consider everything while while uh, estimating the total head uh, and also in order to estimate the power required to pump from one uh, end to the other end. So, here in this example we compute the uh, head loss due to friction in a pipe 7.5 centimeter diameter 100 meter length. So, when the water flowing velocity 2 meter per second the value of f may be assumed to 0.005 in this straight example. So, d is given l v g. So, substitute it in here and uh, you get uh, uh, 5.43 meters of friction 
had uh, in this pipeline. Okay, so the next is uh, okay. So main uh, two ports, if you uh, observe, in case of suction side in a centrifugal pump. So this is called a foot valve. So and uh, and also sometimes you you have strainer to the uh, strainer type or a foot valve. You also strainer, of course. So the foot valve is kind of you know the the opening, right? And this has a, a major role in uh, centrifugal pump operation. So it has a flap valve here, flap valve here. So then. Uh, so during suction, so the valve will be open, so the water will be continuously uh, coming out into the. This is the this is uh, located at this uh, end of this suction pipe. Suppose this is the suction pipe, right? This is the pump, and at the end, this valve is uh, located. So the valve has a flap a flap valve, right? This the foot valve has a flap valve. So during suction, it goes, and when when pump stops, the valve is, I mean, this flap is going to sitting on the opening. So then it is closed. So that that way, the water would not go in, uh, go back to the the sump. So I mean, this is basically will help in priming. Okay. So then, in this case, if you have this valve, uh, water should ent enter through these you know openings, as well as the, this valve. Right, the strainer and valve. So that's why the for strainer, the head loss uh, will be Ks into v square by 2z, and the foot valve Hf is equal to Kf into v, uh, v square by 2z. Those values are given Ks and Kf values. You can substitute it, and uh, based on the velocity, you can uh, uh, find out the uh, corresponding head losses through the uh, I mean these parts. And the other one is the specific speed of a pump. So this is uh, basically the important, and it's an index of the operating characteristic pump, and expresses the relationship between the speed and discharge. So this is specific uh, speed is the so the speed actual speed uh, into q power half divided by h power three by four. So this uh, really is important. And uh, this could be act as an index in operating the characteristics of the pump. So we'll be uh, seeing this uh, during the uh, affinity loss. Okay, where N S is specific speed, N is the pump speed, uh, Q pump discharge, and H is the total head. And next is the friction loss uh, can be estimated through the charts. One is the equation we have seen. And charts also can be used uh, to estimate the uh, friction head loss. So the all charts are here available in uh, order to get friction head loss from 100 meter pipe length. So if you have 100 meter pipe length, right? So these charts can be used. So he, this is the discharge. So knowing the discharge through a pipe Q and its diameter, right? So normal diameter. So then you can. There is a chart available. So this is the Q here and diameter D is here, right? So then you can uh, get the corresponding the friction head loss for 100 meter. So so for example, you get H F for 100 meter, right? 100 meter for a particular discharge and particular diameter D, and you have to convert that uh, or or interpolate uh, that for your desired length L. Suppose your length is 10 meter, so what is the friction head? So that will be um, that was HF by 100 meter into length L. Okay, so this way you'll get uh, HF for corresponding length L. Uh, and then next is the this chart will show how to estimate the uh, friction head loss due to bends. Okay, here different bends are there. The pipe size is given. So pipe size generally, the uh, here the pipe size will take and then bend. Uh, I mean, when when you are talking about the bends, so the so knowing the pipe size, the suction or delivery pipe, and the bend, right? So so for example, you have a long sweep elbow bend. So for long sweep elbow bend, so this entire uh, I mean column works. So knowing the pipe size, suppose 20 mm pipe size. 
So, for sweep bend you get 0.3 right. So, 0.3 is the equivalent length. So, this is the length. So, the previously whatever the L we are talking. So, for this you get point, uh, point 0.3 meters. So, this is not friction head this is this will give uh, an equivalent pipe length equivalent pipe length. So, again we will go back to uh, the table and for 100 meter length we will find out the H f and for this equivalent length right like for example, 0.3 meter what is H f. So, this way we, we calculate. So, for bends we need uh, both this chart as well as the um, pipe length chart. So, we need two charts to find out uh, the friction head loss. Okay, so, this is all uh, for this lecture. So, this in this lecture mostly we, we focus on uh, the uh, centrifugal pump I mean the variable displacement pumps. So, the variable displacement pumps are broadly classified into centrifugal pump, um, mixed flow pumps, axial flow pumps, jet pumps and air lift pumps. Um, so, then the in case of centrifugal pump um, basically uh, it works on you know the velocity head is being uh, converted into pressure head here. So, when it rotates the impeller, so the impeller uh, has the low uh, impeller is going to create uh, low pressure at the center and high pressure at the uh, outlet point. So, that so the velocity which is uh, high at the center will create the low pressure and uh, more at the extreme points. So, that will lead to the uh, water displacement from you know suction to the delivery. So, in this again we have uh, uh, discussed the um, uh, how to estimate the friction head loss right and then uh, so basically for estimating friction head loss. So, you have uh, an equation uh, you know uh, the darcy wishbeck equation and then you also have the charts. The charts are used uh, basically for knowing the friction head loss in a pipe over 100 meter length uh, by knowing the discharge and diameter of the pipe. And uh, similarly for, uh, for the, the parts other parts like bands and uh, uh, the valves there is a chart available. So, for from that chart uh, you will get the equivalent pipe length okay, for a particular part. So, then uh, using that equivalent pipe length uh, and then your uh, 100 meter pipe length uh, friction head loss. So, then you can convert or you can calculate the uh, H f for a particular equivalent pipe length. Okay. So, this way we will be estimating the, um, the friction head loss in a pipe and fittings. Uh, in a centrifugal pump. So, and then in the next class, uh, next lecture, we are going to uh, estimate the power required by a pump and, uh, and, and, and there are few examples. So, we will be uh, calculating the power required uh, in different cases like uh, when you have the pump, uh, I mean when you have water source below the pump center line and you have water source above the pump, pump center line. So, for different these two cases we are going to estimate the power required for a particular pump. Okay. So, thank you.